This video is brought to you by Describe. Link in the description for 10% off your first subscription payment. Hey everyone, I'm Sebastian and welcome to Atmoseeker, your place for creating an inspiring atmosphere for your tabletop role-playing games. In today's episode, I wanted to revisit an old project that I did on the channel a couple of years back to create some immersive ambient lighting for the game room. Today, I wanted to revisit these dungeon torches that were crafted from EVA foam, cardboard and hot glue, which is a great craft if you want to check it out. There's a link in the description below to that original video. But I wanted to update this design and made it 3D printable for a lot of you folks that have 3D printers, as well as making them wireless to be able to hang in any kind of space. So let's have a look at how they came together, what kind of assembly stuff that we might need and painting techniques to get these going and some options for wiring up the lighting. All right, so this one's a fresh one right here. I've designed these to 3D print on your average size printers. They'll print fine on an Ender 3 or something like that. So you don't need like your jumbo ones and they'll print in a couple of parts as well. These guys print supportless and they print in two parts here. You've got the uh, big cage section here and you've got the wall plate here. Now you do notice that I've got a couple of uh, supports on the back here. I was worried that maybe the overhang might be a bit much for any kind of printers. And I didn't want it to lose balance as it was printing. So I thought I'd add some pre-supported uh, pre-supports in there to keep it steady as it printed. Now you could try printing it without it, um, but we can. Uh, well, I, I didn't want to take that chance because it's usually quite a long print to go. Now the supports are pretty easy to come off. I've made them come off pretty easily. You can just use a little Exacto blade to polish off any bits and for the most part I've put the supports on the back there so even if it doesn't clean up completely you won't really see it because it's up against the wall. Now assembly itself is pretty straightforward once you've done all the kind of cleanup and prep you can just grab the two separate pieces like this the wall plate and the cage here and they'll slide in together uh, my glue of choice for this type of thing you could use anything you like if you have anything in particular but one I was using here is this Gorilla Glue, which is like a super glue gel. And you can just pop some in here uh, on the edges and then hold them together. Now just make sure that you've got the back sides together nice and flush. They should go together quite well. And then you gotta kind of just hold it there for a moment until it's solid. Now that it's all cleaned up and assembled, Let's go find a spot to see if we can prime these all up and get painting. Whoa, whoa! Puny mortal, I am today's sponsor, Describe. Wait, Describe? You offer professionally written scenes, places, monsters, and spell descriptions? Yes. My knowledge is ever blooming with flavor text from every situation. Just like the box text from my favorite adventure books. Yes, exactly like that. That does sound pretty good for my next game prep. <laughs> Not about this first. Ah! Check out Describe by the link in the description and use the code Atmosseeker at checkout for 10% off your first subscription payment. So after all that, I managed to find a place to prime up this guy. I just used some flat gray primer. Uh, this one's quite good because uh, it does a good job of filling in some of those layer lines as well. You could go a couple of coats. Uh, just gonna have a nice flat gray finish to it. Uh, and I'm gonna use this one that I've previously done as a guide for uh, getting some of the uh, techniques that I'm using. I wanna start on some areas first before we move on to some of the finer bits. So the first spot I'm gonna focus on is this wall plate on the back here. Uh, you can see it's quite flat there, but we're gonna do some things to kind of add some texture to it. Uh, color wise, what I'm gonna use is uh, light gray, a bit of black as well, and a little bit of brown. I'm not gonna mix them all together. Uh, rather than brush it on, I'm going to grab a little sponge here. You can see this is one of those ones with the green on the back, but any kind of sponge will do. And I'm just going to load it up a bit. And I, this is why I like to do the stone section first, because if you go over, 
onto the wood and stuff, it's not too much of a drama. So in these edges where it's a little bit hard to get to with the sponge, just gonna blow out the brush a little bit, just with a little bit of it, each of those paints. And you could just even dab it in. It doesn't matter if it's messy. We'll clean this up later. All right, now that we've given this a little bit of time to dry, I'm gonna grab a flat brush and some of that light gray again, because we're just gonna do a dry brush on some of this stonework. And then on the edges of the stonework here, just gonna just come at it at an angle and hit some of those, those edges. All right, so the next bit I'm gonna work on is this wooden stick part. And for that, I'm gonna use one of these more pointed brushes, just because we're gonna get into some of the edges and stuff. Uh, so I'm using quite a large one, but it goes to a tip. And I'm gonna get some of this brown paint. I'm just gonna be pretty liberal about how it goes on there. All right, whilst we've still got some brown on the palette, we're also going to add a bit more variation to this brown that we've got on here. So to mix it up and give it a bit more life and color to the wood, I'm gonna use some of this burnt orange mixed in with the uh, burnt umber. Um, and so when I say mixed, I don't think, I don't say mixed together, but I mean more that it's going to be uh, kind of wet blended into the surface that we've got here. So whilst we've got some wet there. Just getting some of that burnt orange, kind of putting it in pretty sparingly actually. It's not, not, I'm not putting a lot. And then with downward strokes, just start blending that together. That's going to kind of lighten up the wood a bit because burnt umber can be quite a dark color. And I'm not completely blending it together. I'm just being mindful of the brush strokes. Whilst we've still got that narrow brush, let's hit some of those dark areas now. Now that we've done all the little special fiddly bits, it's just about getting a big old brush and coating the rest of it in some black paint and a little bit extra of something to make it look like some aged metal. All right, black is all on there, so we've got a nice base coat to work off. You could just leave it like this as well, but we're gonna add a little bit of aging to the metal. Uh, and for that, I'm gonna use some of this copper paint and some of that burnt orange again. And I'm gonna try and work that into the, uh, into the, <laughs> into the cage here. Um, I'm gonna start with the burnt orange first, and I'm gonna use the metallics to kind of add a little bit of that metallic vibe. <laughs> Five, five. All right. So this is going to be essentially more of a dry brush thing. So I'm going to try and just have a little bit of that burnt orange on the brush, pretty light on here, and also just a bit of light movement on the uh, on the black as well. So uh, I'm going to start on the edges here, and if you find yourself going a bit too heavy, you can use your thumb to kind of brush it back as well try and avoid just a full-on dry brush. Uh, that would just bring out any kind of layer lines that we have throughout the 3D print. Um, so I'm just being a bit more strategic and just hitting some of the edges and even stippling it in some points. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, another little extra step I like to do is grab some of the silver metallic paint and I'm just gonna use it very sparingly. And this is gonna be more kind of in these more wearing points. So very, unlike the edges. So you could see, especially here, where I've had a little bit of that wear, and then there's a little bit of that polishing kind of metal kind of coming through. 
All right, so we've got two of them made now, which is pretty good. Uh, I do want to have a few of them. So I'm going to finish up a few more of those and then we're going to look at how we can put some lights into these things uh, and also how to make them wireless. Let's go take a look after make a, uh, a few more here. So I've just hit these torches with some matte varnish to help protect them and make them a little bit more durable. Now we're just gonna have a look at some lighting solutions. Uh, I wanted to keep them pretty simple because I'm not too handy at wiring things. So the first solution is actually the new one where you can actually pop some little wireless lights under there. These are some LED flame bulbs that are rechargeable. They last for about uh, 20 out, 20 hours. I just looked down on the box uh, and you can basically have them and there's enough space to kind of pop them in the base there. It's pretty snug, so you don't have to worry about them falling out, but then you can have these and you've got a little hole in the back here, which is like a little nail hook and you can just pop them up on the wall. And when you're done playing, take them off, uh, which is pretty handy. Uh, another solution is that you can also use one of these pendant uh, light sockets and these can go they thread up through the back of the torch right here there's a hole and then you just screw in the e27 versions of these flame bulbs I'll leave links to those as well screw those in turn it on so like the differences between the two uh, is Definitely with the wide ones, they're a little bit brighter uh, and you don't have to worry about charging, but you get the benefits of being completely wireless with these rechargeable ones. So uh, it's depending on your situation or how you're gonna install these, that's probably where you're gonna make those kind of uh, decisions. But the good thing about the um, using the pendant light socket is that you can always just put whatever light bulbs you want in there. You can even put some smart bulbs in there So you could have it in any other kind of colored lights uh, as well. Uh, and you can activate those with uh, different uh, functions in the stream deck or uh, different kind of color lighting scenes. So that's pretty handy as well. Uh, I've also made little pocket versions of these Dundon torches. And these are powered with these little USB powered flame bulbs as well. So you can have those as your kind of little portable dungeon torch solution. So these are quite cute. Actually, these are great gift ideas if you have uh, a dungeon master that might quite like these. And they've got little clips on the back that you can just hook onto your dungeon master's screen so you can keep that ambience nice and portable as you're kind of DMing around. So that's pretty handy as well. These STL files will be available for download purchase in the Atmos Seeker store, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. But if you're a patron like these glorious fine folk, you'll get early access to files like these and a whole bunch of unreleased stuff that hasn't come out yet. A huge thank you to all my patrons keeping the inspiration going with a special shout out to Anthony Van Olen, Blake Dale, Charisma On Command, Chase McAllister, Chris Andrus, Chris Johnson, Dr. Justin L. Hamrick, John A. Johnson, and Mini Wargaming. Until next time, I'm Sebastian, and let's create and inspire.